welcome to The Wayfaring Panda. I'm Annette. Today I'm going to be making a Swish and Pop card from Lawn Fawn. And I'm using this background I created a long time ago. And I can link that video at the end of this one. And it's just using um, like a marbling technique using uh, shaving cream. Or you could use maybe Cool Whip. But anyway, I'm using this because I thought it looked kind of like a sky. And both the Swish and Pop and the stamp set I'm using are a little older, but I like using that because you don't want to, okay, you bought this a couple of years ago and then just don't use it anymore. And I like using the Swish and Pop for different things because it's very versatile and you can use it with different stamp sets. So today I'm going to be using it with Yay Kites. So I already used some of the dies. And with this one, you use acetate and I just use some transparency that I had, you know, from teaching <laughs> years ago, because I don't use those anymore. So I use that, and also I'm going to be doing some shakers. And then this piece is also cut out of cardstock, which is this. And so we're going to take this on your background paper is what you're going to use this. So you could cut it up however far you need to, but it has to be at least this far up. Where this goes, that's how far it has to be, at least that far. So mine is mostly going to be kite, so I need more space on top. So that's what I'm going to cut it lower. And I'm just going to use run it through my die cutting machine. Oh, you'll need something to cover this with. So I just cut out some Bristol Smooth cardstock, which I'm also use this far because I'm going to do some ink blending. And I just cut out with a rectangle die and then one of my stitch hillside quarter dies. Okay, for this, I'm going to use my Distress Oxide. I'm going to use my Lawn Distress Ink. And of course, I'm going to speed this all up. So I did a lot of my coloring off screen. So that way, I'm mostly going to be having the video to show you how to do the swish and pop. And I did do another swish and pop, but that was a under the under the C type one and also I made it into a shaker card but I made this part into the shaker and my plan today is to make a kite shaker but I don't know we'll have to see once I get this part built together so I can see what size I need or what will fit whether I need to use a smaller kite or a larger kite you can see I got it a little too dark there so I'm going to have to keep blending to it doesn't look so patchy. Now, this is one of the old foams. They do make a new one, which I don't think I have with either of these, but they have the dome phones, both um, scrapbook.com and Tim Holtz has put out. And those do help you um, blend smoother without having these patches as much. Okay, and this is going to be like the pull tab arm, so I'm going to do that one also. This one's Lucky Clover. I'm going to do this one on so I have a little bit of a contrast. And this is just the little tab you put on the end so that it kind of shows the recipient to pull. I watered down some of my Lucky Clover Distress Ink and I'm splattering it on with my fan brush. Okay, for the mechanism you need two brads. So you're going to stick one bad through this hole in the paper. And then you're going to take this, which may be hard to see since it's translucent. We have it where this thing is sticking up and if you can see it, this is the holes are sticking this way. So this is going to go on the lower one. And then your other brad is going to go on top. And that is going to go through one of these holes where you decide that you want it. So that's what I'm going to kind of play with just to see what we want to do. And then I'll kind of determine whether I need a smaller kite or a larger kite. Okay, when it's pushed in, it's going to be down and then go up. That's actually how I think I'm going to prefer it. Just start here and go up. Okay, so that's okay. Um, so what I want to do is just see where I want this to be. So 
we can see where we're going to use our die. I'm gonna just use a glue dot to attach it to the transparency. Actually, I think I'm gonna use a couple. So I'm just gonna kind of put it in the middle. I can cut off the extra. I want to put some string. I'm gonna tie a little knot in it just because it'll keep it from unraveling. I think I'm gonna use a glue dot for that also. Let's see if that'll hold it. Yeah, it feels pretty sticky. And my squirrel's going to go right in here. So that's as far over as I want it to go. So I'm going to have to put something to keep it from going over. So I'm going to put some foam tape right here. Then I add some quarter inch foam tape to keep my kite from going over too far either direction. Then I add foam tape all around where the hill is going to go so that I can prop that up but also make sure I haven't put any foam tape where it's going to interfere with the pull tab mechanism working. And then I discovered I needed to do a double layer, so I went ahead and added another layer of foam tape. I push in the pull tab as far as it will go, and then I cut off the extra. And then I use my glue to glue on my squirrel, and I just put the glue on the bottom half of the squirrel. And I also glue on the tab with the arrow onto my pull tab. Then I just play with my switch and pop a little bit to figure out how long I want the string because it has to reach all the way to the furthest position. And I just tie a knot on it again so it won't fray. But then it turns out to be a little bit too long so then I tie another knot and cut it off. I use some Nuvo Deluxe glue to attach it to the squirrel and then I put it aside to dry and we'll go ahead and make the shaker kites while we're waiting for that to dry. I went ahead and stamped and cut out my kites and colored them. I didn't have the coordinating die for cutting out the shaker part. There is a shaker one for it. So I just use a smaller kite die to cut out a frame. Then I just adhere some quarter inch double sided tape to the back of my kite frame and when I peel off the paper, I fold over the tape because my frame isn't quite a quarter inch wide. Then I had already cut out some acetate, or actually it's the transparency, that I cut out with my kite die cuts and attach that to the back of my frame to make the window. And then I trim off along the side because my transparency stuck out a little bit past the frame. I used some quarter inch double sided foam tape in order to make my shaker wells and since that's too wide I just cut out my pieces and then cut them in half and with the shakers you just want to make sure it's completely enclosed so that your shaker bits don't come out and I like using my tonic scissors because they're non-stick so they're easier to clean when you get the sticky stuff on them. You'll see that I spilt my sequins when I started to put them in my window and forgot to do the inside of my shakers. So I'm using my powder tool to go around the edges of the inside of the shakers so that it makes the tape not so sticky on the inside so the sequins and things like that won't stick to the tape. So I'm putting in some blue, turquoise, and purple sequins and then I add some clear seed beads. Then I just attach the back of my kite to my shaker and that completes the shaker. Now I went ahead and did another purple one off screen. Off screen I went ahead and got a card base ready that says wishing you a wonderful birthday and I stamped a kite inside and then I just glue this panel to the front of my card and that's where the camera went off because I think the battery died. While the camera was recharging, I went ahead and made another purple kite. And I actually decided I liked the shaker kite better where I had the little one. And so I just glued this blue shaker one we made earlier over the other kite. And these other images are images that I stamped and colored off screen. And now I'm just going to glue them down with some Nuvo Deluxe glue. And I just kind of shift things around as I glue. 
I'll put a list of all the products that I'm using in the description below. Some of these will be affiliate links. They don't cost you anything extra to use, but I do get a small commission from any sales that those links generate, and that helps support my channel. I noticed that I forgot to color in the beak and feet of the owl, so I just got out my Y15 Copic marker to color that in. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you have any comments or any ideas of how you might use the swish and pop mechanism or shaker cards, please leave your comments below. I'll also put a link to the other swish and pop video I have of making an under the C card at the end of this video, as well as a link to a playlist for making interactive cards. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd really appreciate if you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.